In the deadly swamp, a man fearlessly groped his way, and in the next second, the Hydra finally emerged. The man swung his sword and killed it. In the Alps, the man battled against the savage and massive Boar King, ultimately beating it to death with a club. The strongest enemy the man encountered was a lion that was impervious to weapons. Despite this, he still relied on his strong strength to tear open the lion's mouth and win. This man is the son of Zeus, the mighty Hercules. He was born of Zeus, the king of the gods, and a mortal woman. The demigod Hercules was discovered by Hera, who sought to kill him. But the mighty Hercules easily strangled the venomous snake. As he grew up, he was known for his righteousness and greatly loved by the people of Athens. His fame made the king fearful, so the king poisoned Hercules' liquor. Taking advantage of his unconscious state, three ferocious wolves were set loose in his room, and they killed his wife and children. When Hercules woke up, he found his hands stained with blood, believing that he had killed his own family. In the court, the king accused Hercules of murdering his family, and according to the law, he was to be banished from Athens. Overwhelmed with guilt, Hercules, seeing his bloodied hands, fell deep into self-reproach. From then on, Hercules was exiled from Athens and could only live as a mercenary. One day, a group of pirates captured his nephew, intending to harm him. In this critical moment, Hercules arrived wearing a lion's head mask to rescue them. The pirate leader sent his subordinates to fight him, but they were all defeated with a single move. Facing the charging pirates, he easily dispatched them all. and finally saved his kidnapped nephew. Afterwards, they went to a local tavern, where Hercules' reputation had already spread. The tavern owner and her daughter had long admired him, and their admiration grew even stronger upon meeting Hercules. While they were drinking, soldiers suddenly burst into the tavern. Among them was a woman, the princess of the local kingdom, seeking Hercules' help. It turned out that their country was in the midst of a civil war, with the enemy occupying their land and committing atrocities. If they could help defeat the enemy, the king promised to reward Hercules with an amount of gold equal to his own weight. The generous reward made him ponder for a moment before agreeing. In the palace, the old king welcomed Hercules' arrival but expressed doubts about the abilities of his companions. The Amazon warrior in the group had no choice but to demonstrate her swordsmanship on the spot. The king applauded and stopped questioning further. During the meal, the king informed Hercules that their enemies were half-human, half-horse monsters. Due to continuous defeats, the king's army was now composed of farmers and merchants. Hercules had no choice but to train these farmer soldiers into true warriors. He told the soldiers that survival on the battlefield was more important than killing the enemy. The phalanx shield wall was the most effective tactic, so he had the soldiers form a shield wall and tested it with male warriors. They easily broke through, indicating that the army still needed more training. Just a few days into their training, Hercules was summoned to the palace by the king. It turned out that the king's informant had reported that the enemy had invaded the border once again. Despite Hercules' strong persuasion, the old king insisted on leading the troops into battle. They could only depart for the border the next day. As they were about to reach the border, Hercules suddenly ordered the troops to stop. Hercules got off the carriage and inspected the area, only to find three heads strung together in the mist. It turned out that the village here had already been massacred by the enemy. But they discovered something suspicious. There were fresh bodies lying on the ground. They had fallen into the enemy's ambush. Immediately, numerous well-ambushed green-skinned savages surrounded Hercules' troops. The savages in front challenged Hercules for a one-on-one -on -one fight. Facing the provocation, Hercules gladly accepted. He secretly broke an arrowhead and concealed it in his hand, drive it directly into the savage's skull. Although it boosted morale, Hercules! 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 the savages noticed Hercules' cheating behavior. Enraged, they swarmed from all directions, completely surrounding their phalanx. Hercules and a few of his teammates charged at the forefront, continuously wielding their weapons to reap the enemies. The battle was chaotic, and despite Hercules and his team's valiant performance, the savages broke through the phalanx. Seeing the old king in danger, they brought a war chariot with two sharp blades and massacred the savages around the phalanx. Hercules fought on the chariot, 
finally driving back the horde of savages. Despite the victory, Hercules' army suffered heavy losses. The enemy, half-human, half-horse creatures watched the battle from the mountaintop and disappeared into the smoke. Hercules was extremely dissatisfied with the brutal battle and found the king to reprimand him for deploying poorly trained soldiers. Finally, the king realized his mistake and had to train the soldiers properly first. At night, Hercules entered his dream and was awakened by a nightmare of killing his wife and children. Unable to sleep, he went out for a walk and accidentally stumbled upon a pile of corpses. In a daze, he thought he saw his wife and children's bodies being devoured by a three-headed hellhound. Enraged, Hercules shouted in anger, only to realize when he opened his eyes that he had been hallucinating. In the following days, he trained the soldiers with all his might and the other teammates took on the role of coaches as well. They improved the soldiers' combat capabilities from all aspects and the soldiers had officially become competent warriors. Thus, Hercules led the army and marched towards the border. Finally, they encountered the legendary centaurs, who turned out to be disguising themselves as centaurs to scare away the enemy. The battle horn sounded, and tens of thousands of centaurs charged forward. They were strong and numerous, but Hercules remained calm and immediately ordered the formation to be deployed. When the enemy approached, archers hidden in the small woods suddenly rushed out, catching the enemy off guard. Soon, most of the enemy's cavalry was eliminated, and then a large number of infantry swarmed in. Hercules arranged a large number of archers within the phalanx to deplete the enemy's numbers. Coordinating with the shield formation, they slowly moved forward, reaping heads of the enemy. The enemy suffered heavy casualties and could only retreat. The enemy leader was unwilling to accept defeat and charged on a fast horse with a raised sword. But he underestimated Hercules' strength and was knocked down along with his horse. Back in the palace, the enemy leader was kicked down and humiliated by the soldiers. Unable to bear it, Hercules intervened to stop such behavior. Instead of being grateful, the enemy leader claimed that Hercules had helped the wrong person. Hercules felt puzzled, unable to understand why the enemy would say such things. During the victory celebration, Hercules noticed something suspicious. There seemed to be a familiar connection between the princess and the enemy leader. He confronted the princess and discovered that the real aggressor was the king himself. Using the princess's son as leverage, the king had coerced her into deceiving Hercules. Enraged by the truth, Hercules publicly accused the king of being the invader. The king, relying on his supporters, showed no fear. Hercules had no choice but to leave the palace, taking the gold with him. Witnessing the despair in the eyes of nearby refugees, Hercules felt a deep sense of guilt. To ensure a better life for the refugees, he decided to fight his way back into the palace and overthrow the tyrannical king. As soon as he entered the palace, he found himself surrounded by soldiers. It was clear that they had fallen into the king's trap. In order to protect his comrades, Hercules reluctantly laid down his weapons. In the dungeon, Hercules gradually regained consciousness, only to be confronted by a ferocious three-headed hellhound. Thinking it was another hallucination, Hercules soon realized that these were actually three trained ferocious dogs. At that moment, the king of Athens, whom Hercules had once served, appeared. It turned out that the king had formed an alliance with the local king planning to rule over the entire Greek empire together. After learning of the Athenian king's ambitions, Hercules remembered the wounds on his wife and children and understood that the wounds were caused by dogs. He confronted the king of Athens, who admitted to ordering the dogs to kill his wife and children. Unable to believe what he heard, Hercules realized that the king had killed his own family simply because Hercules had more prestige than him. Hercules broke free from the iron chains, leaped forward, and saved the princess from being beheaded. In response, the king ordered the release of the hellhounds and locked the dungeon door. The three hellhounds simultaneously attacked Hercules, but the mighty Hercules grabbed one and slammed it against the wall in anger. He tore the mouth of another hellhound with his bare hands leaving only one hellhound biting his leg. Hercules pulled out a hidden weapon and stabbed it into the skull of the remaining hellhound. After killing all the hellhounds, he escaped from the dungeon. Hercules confronted the king of Athens, who pleaded for mercy in panic. Seeing through the ingratitude of this man, Hercules grabbed him by the neck and threw him onto the throne behind him. Drawing his sword, Hercules ended the king's life, avenging his wife and children. As they tried to escape from the palace, the king had already led the soldiers to surround the exits. 
Hercules had no choice but to lead the others to retreat towards the statue. However, the king immediately ordered the soldiers to attack. In a desperate situation, Hercules overturned a massive brazier to block the soldiers, and the fierce flames successfully forced them to retreat. However, the fire soon burned out, and the king launched a second wave of attacks. In this life, or death moment, Hercules had a bold idea. He looked at the towering statue in front of him, bent down, and exerted all his strength to shake the statue. With a loud crash, the hundred-meter tall statue collapsed, and the soldiers who were chasing them turned and fled. The stubborn king tried to persuade the soldiers to return to the fight, but was struck by the falling head of the statue and fell into the abyss. Hercules reappeared before the people's eyes, and by now, the soldiers had no will to fight anymore. They realized Hercules' divine power and dropped their weapons, kneeling down to worship him. Please subscribe to my channel. Share different movies and videos every day.